video to break down the NBA playoffs. Make sure to check that out Thursday and Friday. He was here last week, did such a great job, had so much fun. Bring He's going to be awesome previewing the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. He's going to be an absolute expert on Garden Steps, CP3. Great all. perspective. Got a little beef really great too. perspective. Oh, great Why? Great oh, well, wait. So we'll find out tomorrow. Since we went to the first kiss, I think he's been cheating on me. I've been seeing him oh. in other places. Oh, okay. I like okay, it. That's a metaphor yep. for folks at home. Say, Undisputed is coming, up. <laughs> it's coming up next. Joy, good morning. Save us. What will you and the guys be talking about today? Good morning, Jenna. Good morning, guys. Coming up on Undisputed, will the Rockets take down the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals? And Tiger Woods had some interesting things to say about LeBron yesterday. Plus, Lakers rookie Kyle Kuzma is in the studio with us. We'll talk to him about the Lakers, Lonzo, the playoffs, and a lot more. Undisputed is coming up next. Jenna, back to you guys. All right, Joy, thank you. We look forward to that. We're going viral here, first things first. Check this out. Jessica Thomas is a librarian at the Kansas City High School. Yesterday, she tweeted this after catching one of her students watching first things first in study hall. Oh Who my needs God. to study uh, when you that, can watch That's us. amazing. It, it is amazing. I do want to let the audience know, because Jenna said at the Kansas City High School. I know I'm not from a huge city, my hometown. It's a Kansas City High School. <laughs> 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 not just our one high school. The one, the <laughs> one horse town, the, the one kid to the high school. That is dope, though. That, that is was awesome. the library. The, the library at the high school in my hometown, Kansas City. <laughs> this is one, one big room, right. K through 12. Right. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm glad they tweeted that to us. That's a really cool moment. That's I like good that. stuff. I hope he didn't get in trouble. Just watching one of Kansas City guys done I'm, good. I'm talking about extra credit. Exactly right. Trouble. Agree. You walk around, see that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Nice. Very cool. That's what that picture right there might scare a couple kids. Oh, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we can explain the Rockets by explaining the concept of friendship. So if Nick is sick, CC steps up. If CC is sick, Nick steps up. If I'm sick, we're all screwed. We're screwed a lot then. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't have the best of right. this hey. America. Hey, <laughs> Rockets, Jazz, game five. James Harden not feeling great, so his BFF Chris Paul stepped up. Stepped up big time. 41 points. 20 of those points came in the fourth quarter. He also had 10 assists, zero turnovers. Arguably best game of his postseason career. The Rockets are in the conference finals. Here's James Harden on Chris Paul. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, you know, he went out there and, and, and took over the game, you know, and, and especially for an opportunity like, you know, him, he's never had before. He went to go get it. You know, he put us all on his back and said, listen, you know, I got us. That's uh, that's big time right there. It's a big time performance. He got in his bag and, uh, you know, he called everybody off. He said, you, you get out the way, I'm going to put us on the back. Eyes, he had yeah, that look in his here, eyes. Here you go. I mean, it. It, if, if he has a... <laughs> I don't, I, I don't care what you say, but uh, you know, and if he if he has a look in his eyes, you know, every single night, he's a problem. I like the relationship. Absolutely. Great relationship, fun relationship. What do you think, CC? Do you think what Chris Paul did in that game sort of changed your perception of his? postseason career? Uh, Nick and I, we, we have a, a mutual admiration society for Chris Paul. We feel like he's unappreciated as a superstar. We feel like sometimes if, if your team is not ultimately successful, then you get labeled with some of the things that the team and the organization. And we feel like Chris Paul is in that class. A, a world class, not only a person, but we, defense is so underrated. But over 10 years, there hadn't been a guard that's been as consistent on the defensive end as Chris Paul. We believe he's underrated as a player. Yeah. But you need this stage, though, because this is the stage that is the qualifying system that we have created for NBA players. What you do in the postseason, are you successful? Does your team get on that, get to the finals, or win an NBA championship? I believe Chris Paul will get credit in this next series for the type of career that he's had. Listen, I, when it's all said and done, I firmly believe there will only be two point guards that you can definitively say were better than Chris Paul. Magic Johnson and Oscar Robertson. I believe he will be in the discussion with John Stockton, Isaiah Thomas, Steph Curry, who's elevating himself into that discussion, okay, uh, yes. uh, Jason Kidd. I, I think that is the caliber of player Chris Paul is, is and has been. But what he couldn't be and what he was until about 12 hours ago was the guy who had played the most games in playoff history without ever making it to round three. 
And so he needed this. And while a win might not change a lot of people's perception, a loss would have. If not just yeah. if they would have oh, lost yes. this series, mm -hmm. if they would have lost last night. And then go, go lose in Utah and then lose a game seven. Oh, my goodness gracious. For everyone involved, but particularly this player. And so it's not only that they won, Jenna. It is the way in which they won. Style. Hard and sick. So Chris Paul in the fourth quarter goes out and has his most prolific scoring quarter of his entire career, regular season or postseason. Take Chris Paul's career out of it. Take the entirety of NBA playoff history. No one had ever had a 40-point, 10-assist, zero turnover game in the history of the NBA playoffs. And I put a he tremendous amount night. of importance on the no turnovers. I, you got to take care of the basketball. Like, the, the NBA is not a, a get to take the best shot. It is not, okay, to always take care of the ball because they play a little careless and because they right. create so much. It's not a stat all the time that people look at, but that, to me, is one of the important things. The amount of minutes he played, the amount of points that he scored, and with zero turnovers. Chris Paul had eight three-pointers last night, and you brought up something interesting earlier in the week, Nick. You said this was a team that was just so prolific from three-point range, and yet we hadn't seen any of that in the postseason. Games two through four, we didn't see that. They went 31 of 111 from three-point range, which was their moneymaker mm -hmm. leading up to the postseason. Then in game five, they shoot 46%, and they finally sort of rediscovered they hit 18 what of made them. them. Yep. They hit 18 of them, and they needed them, by the way. Because in the third quarter, Donovan Mitchell was cooking, and, it, and they had blown what was an eight-point halftime lead. All of a sudden, it's a three-point deficit going into the fourth, and Harden wasn't there for him. I mean, Harden, it was weird. Harden, six, still found a way to found the energy for the 22 shots. The same number of shots Chris Paul took. They just weren't great shots. He wasn't doing what he typically does offensively. And Chris Paul absolutely carried them. Yeah, I, I love the fact through this series uh, the way Chris Paul plays the game because – now, Chris Paul going to Houston was not the perfect fit, like, because the, the analytics, I know Nick has, has, has really expressed this to me, they don't support the type of game that he has. Yeah, Chris Paul is an effective three-point shooter. He's not known for his three-point shooting. He's known for the way he handles the ball, his intermediate jump shot, and the way he plays defense. Now, the intermediate jump shot, how useful is that? In this series, one of the few where they have Rudy Gobert as a rim protector and shot blocker, the intermediate jump shot became very important because he's protecting the rim. Once you run pick and roll, that 15 to 12 foot jump shot where Chris Paul has thrived, he utilized that in this series. And I thought it would be utilized also in the Western Conference Finals. So that was one of the things that I picked out in this five game series that I thought was really special about Chris Paul's game. All right, so the Western Conference Finals are set. It yes, is the Rockets, it is the Warriors. Uh, do you think it's lived up to the expectations well, that I, we're all set for, for this series? I hope it does. I, what, I, what I know is the playoffs thus far, it, it, see Sox all the time, you can't lie in the draft. That, it, the, the NBA playoffs have a way of having the truth come out. Like we thought, we knew Golden State and Houston were the two best teams in the regular season. Guess who have the two best records in the postseason? Eight and two both. Mm -hmm. Golden State and Houston. I felt deep down the Cavs, when it's all said and done, be the next best team in the playoffs. Guess who has the third best record in the playoffs? The Cleveland Cavaliers, eight and three in the postseason. Like teams that we thought, are, how, you know, Portland, wow, are they as good as a three seed? Oh, oh, oh they, they knocked out in the first round. Like we, we, the, the playoffs will speak the truth. And I say that to say this. Western well, Conference Finals, man. How important are the 65 wins? How important is home court advantage? How much can the Rockets stick with their commitment to the defensive end of the court when you got four Hall of Famers, the two best shooters ever, and three of the ten best offensive players, or three of the ten best shooters ever, coming into your gym for game one Monday night? Yeah, I think it lives up to the expectation. For me, there's nothing like the NBA Finals. But when you have two teams been on a crash course like this, this is NBA final-ish. And the reason why, not the magnitude of what it means in, 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 in real time, but what it means to these individuals. Steph, Clay, Draymond. Man, they got a potential win three of four. KD going back to back after making the monumental decision to come from OKC to go to Golden State. Everyone. Del Morey, his analytics. Hey, listen, he's a smart guy. He's going to be a smart guy without a job. They don't win some championships there. I know the owner loves him. Chris Paul, James Harden, the coach. 
All these narratives to me are much bigger than anything else going on in basketball besides LeBron James. So, man, the Western Conference Final is going to be spectacular. And this is why, to be totally honest, that the discrepancy, which I think this year the discrepancy between conferences has been overstated, but over the last decade the West has clearly been better than the East. This is why the playoffs set up such a great storyline is it's this gauntlet in the West and then waiting in the East is one of the two greatest players in the history of the sport waiting for you. And I know I'm advancing them past Boston. Apologies, Jenna Wolf, but I'm advancing them past Boston. I just hope this thing goes seven. Let's have it go seven, man. Yeah, but that's the first time you've got the whole thing right. The dude is one of the greatest one or two best I players. Just, I you just, finally got it. I didn't have enough time to argue about it. Let me put that truth sir back in. I didn't have enough time to argue about it. Undisputed. Speak that truth, bruh.